What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my first impressions of Outward, and more specifically, its Definitive Edition. Now, I did do a sponsored video for the Definitive Edition launch for the developers of Outward, Nine Dot Studios. That said, those videos tend to be more subjective in nature, and I don't try to sprinkle in too many of my own opinions, so I wanted to go ahead and make this first impressions video as I move to review the title so I can actually talk about some of my genuine opinions about the game at first glance. That said, I will be 100%ing this title, which is probably going to take a little bit of work, and it is what I am choosing to take a break with in between Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 before we review that title as well. But the goal is do all of the things, review Outward, which has a sort of cult classic following, and it's a game that people have requested me to review in the past, so I figured we would get to it. So, my first impression of Outward is that honestly, it leaves a pretty bad first impression. I did get to a point where I was actually having a lot of fun after a while, but the initial shock of the gameplay, if you will, is very rough around the edges. The game doesn't do a great job of easing you into mechanics or teaching you about things. So I spent probably my first four or five hours just kind of wandering around, not really sure of what I should even be doing. But I will tell you, once I kind of powered past that part, something just kind of clicked and I got it and I started having a lot of fun. Now, I think a lot of that can be jotted down to the fact that at its core, Outward is a survival game. You're going to have to manage things like your character's hunger, thirst, their need for sleep, even the temperature outside, some areas snow, you have to deal with that, and there is a lot that goes into the preparation of each outing, if you will. But this gets further compounded a little bit by the fact that the character progression in this game is tied primarily down to items and the faction you join. There's not a leveling system per se. Rather, as you kill things and learn how to craft more and more stuff, you get better equipment, and then as you gather resources, you can then learn skills from specific trainers, which help Helps you kind of develop a build, and that's how you slowly be able to take on more and more of the world as you learn to handle more and more problems. Now, this does a few things. For starters, I think it gives the game some replayability, because when combined with the fact that you have to join a faction, and you can only keep one save file for each playthrough, you're left with a game that for 100%, you've got to run through at least four times for each faction, as the factions are exclusive to one another. If you join one, you can't join the others. Each faction will show you part of the story, and all of this just kind of combines to give the game a lot of sort of roguelite elements on top of all of the survival stuff going on. But it's a game where the more you play and the more you learn about where items are, what enemies do, the better you get at it. But I would tell you the game in general requires a certain amount of commitment on the player's part to get very far because this is a game I can see people just jumping into and getting very frustrated very quickly because the game does almost nothing practically to teach you about what it is you're doing. There are a couple of small tutorials but they explain very very little and for the most part it's left to the player to figure these things out and for some that can be a rewarding experience and for others it's just a really bad time. Now rather interestingly enough though despite their being that sort of hard learning curve, there is no death in this game. Rather, they use what they call defeat scenarios. So every time your character gets brought to zero health, you get dragged off into some scenario. Maybe you got drugged somewhere by wolves. Maybe a kind traveler saved you and brought you back to town. There's all sorts of these scenarios that can happen to your character, and you'll wake up somewhere. And in some cases, that scenario will then lead to more role-playing opportunities. Or in some cases, you might just get stuck in a bit of a loop where you die over and over again until you get sent back to the inn. So even a system like that tends to have a very polarizing effect on the game world, in my opinion, where, again, I think people are either going to like this game or they're going to hate it. And that's basically my first impressions of the game, is that it took me several hours to really get into the game and really understand what it was trying to do. And again, after that, it just kind of clicked and I started having a lot of fun. But that doesn't really change the fact that the initial gameplay experience, the first several hours of this game, were just not a good time. But I do think it's a game that, again, the more you play, the more appreciation you can get for what it's trying to do, with a bit of mixed success, in my initial opinion. There you go, guys. First impressions of Outward. It's an ambitious title that does some things really well. Some things I think are more frustrating than fun. But if you're looking forward to the review after 100% for Outward's Definitive Edition, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Let me know how you feel about the title down below. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.